Rich Sander here, and we're with John Rafferty again today, and we're talking about the solstice or Saturnalia. Yeah, we'll see what's happening. Welcome to the Moral Misfits. Hello, John, and happy solstice to you. It's amazing that we're actually recording on the solstice, and it's a big deal, which I know we're going to talk about, uh, this, this confluence or con <laughs> conjugation, whatever. They, whatever. Uh, but it's good to be here anyway. So yeah, we're going to uh, kind of cover a little bit uh, for those people out there that may not be familiar with the solstice, a little bit about really what it is. I mean, there is a real thing that goes on and that's why it's called the solstice. Um, we're gonna talk about the history of the solstice and Saturnalia and uh, celebrations during this time of the year. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about, the, as James Randi, who passed away recently, would say, we're gonna talk a little bit about the woo-woo, <laughs> maybe astrology uh, um you know i'm a fan of astronomy not astrology but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit and then we'll talk about the future and why atheists why why can't we party and have fun uh this time of the year and what we could do so those are the areas i want to kind of cover today and hopefully those people that are watching at home find this interesting about the solstice and, and okay i think one of the things that we ought to uh Keep in mind very much that the solstice has nothing to do with us. We make a fuss about the solstice, but the solstice is just a matter of when the earth turns and how, where it is in its journey, annual journey around the sun. And that was going on billions, even billions of years before there were people. So, so you're when it was first started, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, that's correct. So the actual solstice is when the Earth's tilt is at its apex, uh, where, let's say, the North Pole is uh, uh, tilting away from the sun. So it's getting less light at the northern hemisphere. Technically, last night, the 20th, because the solstice technically was at 5.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're in Central, it'll be a little, you know, 4.03. And if you were in Europe, it would have been um, later in the afternoon. So that's that's the technical aspects of the solstice. And there's a summer solstice. And that's when the, the Earth is at its rotation where its tilt is facing for the Northern Hemisphere is uh, tilting more toward the sun and we get the most amount of daylight. So the winter solstice is the least amount of daylight. Still the same amount of 24 hours, but we get a little less sun during the day. Right. And uh, now from now, and this is what uh, I think a lot of people get mixed up sometimes is, is that it's at the equinox when they start getting more sun, but it's actually now. And now that the solstice has happened, each day you're gonna get more and more sun until the summer solstice and then the summer solstice the daylight in the northern hemisphere starts to go down uh and our not down but it has less of it during the day so that's technically what the solstice is uh i read somewhere a long time ago uh that the difference day by day is about two from now until the summer solstice is about two minutes earlier the sun rising two minutes earlier every day and setting two minutes later in other words every day we get four minutes more sunshine assuming it isn't raining uh, or, or some other catastrophe um, so that we have four minutes more per day and you know it's interesting you bring, you bring up this summer solstice as well the summer solstice in in Many uh, uh, human societies is celebrated 
but not like the winter solstice because it's been getting darker and darker. And why people celebrate the winter solstice is this is as bad as it's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and from here on in, we're going to get a little bit more sunshine every day. So let's have a party. <laughs> And, and we've seen that with a lot of cultures, and we'll get into that in a, in a second. But I think that uh, the four minutes thing, I think, is more toward, and, and I'm sure some people are going to correct me, that's more uh, uh, on an average basis. I think that's more around the equinox time, because as the, as the Earth is tilting and we get more higher into the to the latitudes of of the northern hemisphere, it slows down a little bit. So it might be two minutes, uh, and then it gets up to four minutes, and then it gets during the summer solstice, it gets back down to two minutes. So I think that four minutes is kind of an average and stuff. Uh, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sure some people will correct me on that. But uh, but it is like that. And uh, you know, at work today, I was telling people happy solstice, and it's like, well, what's that? <laughs> and yeah. So I had to explain it to them a little bit. So for the people who are not, not necessarily versed on the solstice or understand what it is, or uh, you know, some of the atheists uh, think that this is a, a you know a, a holiday for us to celebrate or a celestial event uh, that we should celebrate. And you know, I think that there might be a little history there that we can, let's say, co-opt um, you know, to. Uh, take the best of, uh, and we'll get in that toward the toward the end. But in doing a little research for this, there is some parts of the history of the solstice and Saturnalia. So this is the time of the year when the Earth tilts, and we got a better view, view of Saturn. And in this year, we have a once in four hundred year event where Saturn and Jupiter are passing each other. And the, the, the view uh, from Earth to Saturn and Jupiter is at its smallest, so less than a half of a percent angle, I guess, is how they um, technically describe it. But it was interesting to find out that Earth to Jupiter is closer than Jupiter is to Saturn. So Saturn is way out there. So I guess Saturn is five astronomical units. And for those who don't know, because this is something my niece brought up, is like sometimes we make and, and say terms that people may not understand and don't know what the term means. But uh, from uh, an astrophysics standpoint, uh, an astronomical unit is the distance between the sun and the earth. And well, 90 million miles. Yeah, 93 million or 89, something like that. Yes. And then Jupiter is five of those. And Saturn is twice of that. So the distance between uh, uh, Jupiter and Mars is four astronomical units and another five out to Saturn. So it's interesting to see in the sky that we're closer to the Jupiter than we are to, to Saturn is to, to Jupiter. And those are some interesting facts about the, the solar system that some people may not know, but it's, uh, it's uh, an event that, that happens uh, not so often and it's great to be able to celebrate it. So it's called the Great Conjunction and uh, we'll talk about what astrology is going nuts over <laughs> with that. But that's, that's what's happening. And the, the celebrations for Saturnalia or celebrating Saturn uh, have been popular in, in Roman culture and, uh, and uh, during the Roman Empire, during certain parts of that, they had parties and they exchanged gifts and did gag gifts and they did that sort of stuff. Um, and it was also interesting to do some research and figure out that uh, some people call Mithras or Mitra, uh, that the Romans co-opted this uh, Persian god, or in India, it's also part of their mythology um, that uh, Mithras uh, was a sun god, and they also celebrated as a god of commerce. 
So I found that very interesting that because it was a god of commerce, you know, it made its way through cultures as they did trade from, you know, the Far East through Persia, through the Middle East into Southern Europe and the Mediterranean, that uh, I, I could see very easily that some business guys were sitting around drinking and saying, oh, let's, let's do that holiday. That sounds like fun. You know, that's the, we'll, we'll celebrate our business together and, and do that at the end of the year with uh, Saturnalia or celebrating, uh, and they called it Mitra. Uh, so they in, end up creating their own mythology around that. But uh, there are some atheists that sit there and want to, say, okay, well, Christmas, uh, the 25th of December is Mithras' birthday, but that kind of um, link is very tenuous. There's really not any good actual historical evidence for that. And, and we're really today talking about the, the solstice and Saturnalia, which uh, celebrated from, I believe, the 17th of December to the 23rd. So that's even before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so fun with it. Rich, if I can interrupt for a moment, one of the things that we try to do here is very often we get into debunking mode, mood, <laughs> mode or mood, and um, we this whole thing with Mithra and Jesus uh, has been a thing for a long time, and many people really on our side, atheists, humanists, rationalists skeptics got sold on this wacko thing that the whole story of Jesus, the virgin birth, the, the, the coming back from the dead, the water into wine, and all of that was lifted straight from Mithra, from the cult of Mithra. And it, there's even a wonderful uh, video of, uh, of Stephen Fry running this down and saying, isn't this amazing? <laughs> not amazing, because it's not true. But the people on our side of the book, so to speak, can get suckered into these kind of things too. And what we try to do is just look at the science. Uh, look at, you know, if it doesn't add up, if the arithmetic doesn't square, it ain't true. And, uh, Anyway, that's just, I found out about that just doing the research for tonight. I didn't know about it. Anyway. Yeah, and I, and I think that when we look at it, uh, to be a good skeptic and look back at history, there really isn't a lot of evidence, you know, for a lot of the stuff that Christians believe. <laughs> and there's not a lot of evidence for this Mithra. It, it probably was a thing, but how it happened and whether it, the, 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 that the Roman soldiers or the Roman generals or the Roman business elites uh, heard about this and co-opted it and made it their own, uh, or, or uh, that Saturnalia was uh, a big celebration. And they did all kinds of crazy things with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they did role reversals where the masters uh, dressed like the slaves and the, and the slaves got to make the rules for the day and and uh you know you had to kind of watch what rules you made yeah. <laughs> because retribution was tomorrow <laughs> right exactly yeah, you, the slave is not going to take advantage of the day and say okay master you clean the toilets today i don't think that happened <laughs> uh you yeah. know yeah. funny sir and might be what they made them do, but uh, make them look silly. But I think they were all in for something like that. But uh, cleaning the toilets wasn't going to happen. But yeah. uh, who knows exactly what had happened during those celebrations? There's really not a lot of historical information of exactly what happened. But in my mind, I looked at it and said, oh, well, you know, if we're having a party. I'm all for that. You know, if it's a celestial event, you know, that's a real thing. So we can narrow down on that. Is there any any emotional significance to it? No, but it's a nice thing to do during the winter when, you know, 
there is a lot of night and uh and uh, and we're getting ready to end the year and uh we're ready to move on uh and and get more sun and and hope for our new year and and uh people want to be able to survive the winter and it's already been here for a while and they're just tired of it kind of like covid this year it's uh, <laughs> a lot of people are like yeah. tired of this i want to be able to i suppose so yeah. a little bit and it's like yeah you got to hold off for a little bit you know you're uh, you're probably staying home i'm staying home it's like uh, absolutely it's it, it really is uh uh, unfortunate for this year, but I hope that, and we see that in the future that we'll be able to, to gather and socialize. And, you know, that's one of the big things about moral misfits is, is I don't really want it to be, uh, you know, we can have a celebration, but I don't wanna really want to wait for us to socialize. And I'm hoping that in 2021, as COVID uh, ends up being, you know, history and that people are, are vaccinated and they're able to socialize again, that people will meet and gather on Sundays and, and uh, join together and m maybe have a meal or a potluck or get together um, and then turn around and be able to uh, socialize with their friends, their neighbors, people that they know. Hopefully that's a that's that's a thing, and people want to do that, and they watch us for a little while as we talk about different things and humanistic ethics, and you know all the bad stuff that people do, and why we shouldn't be doing those. But I think you know a couple times during the year we should have a celebration. We should do that, and we'll talk more about that in the end. But I think that when we look at the significance of what happened in the past with the history of Saturnalia and Mithras and celebrations that happen, winter celebrations that happen in, you know, in Asia and Northern Europe, the Germans had their own thing with trees and, and gift giving. And, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of cultures throughout the world that celebrated their own way of getting through the winter. And I think that's a very humanistic thing and that we should all be a nice human about it. And <laughs> you like my picture, you know? I, oh, uh, yeah. Well, as I told you, when I first saw it, it's a hard to argue with that. <laughs> even, even the worst person you're going to meet during the day is not going to argue. <laughs> Hell no, I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, but not today. I, I, right, you know, what, but, but it's interesting to, to, to me to see that there is this possibility to understand the history of what happened with these winter celebrations and that there is an actual event that happens and you know we mark that passage of time that uh, the apex of the earth is at its highest or lowest tilt to the sun during the year and that uh you know it's 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 arbitrary in a certain aspect. You know, the equinoxes is even night and even daylight. Um, the solstice are most night, least night, like tonight, or technically, I guess last night was. So we're on the we're on the upswing now to <laughs> more fun. And, yeah. Well, you, you, you're, you're quite right because I mean, this is an accepted fact of uh, human behavior, uh, the psychologists and the psychiatrists and the, 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 all, the, all the research indicates people need these markers in their lives. They need to celebrate things. You need to celebrate a birth, a wedding, a death. And I'm using the word celebrate in the broadest possible sense. A six-year-old graduating from kindergarten, you know, it's ridiculous, but we do it. People do it because it marks the days. A friend of mine just died recently, but many years ago, um, he he and his wife and me, my wife, we, we were at uh, a Thanksgiving celebration, and it was in the days when still everybody smoked. And we were out of cigarettes and we went to the 
local, the, the, the neighborhood candy store to buy cigarettes. And there was a guy sitting at the counter. And he was complaining to the young man who was working there on Thanksgiving night. And he was saying, I can't stand holidays. I hate holidays because the time goes by too slow. I, when I got to go to work, at least the time goes by quickly. And when we went out, of, Mel and I looked at each other and said, that is the creepiest, saddest guy I've ever seen in my life. Wow. I, I, it, it was just so wrong in terms of the way 99% of the people on earth feel. They have to, we have to celebrate. We have to say this day is different and tomorrow's going to be different from yesterday because of today. We need that. And so you're right. We come out of this COVID lockdown and there's going to be changes. There are going to be changes. We may not all shake hands anymore the first time we meet people. And we may, we may automatically wear masks during flu season. Let's just do it. We won't do it all, all year round. We're going to, we're going to, it's going to be different. It's going to be very different. And we're going to, be a little bit, feel a little bit different about how we are in crowds, <laughs> you know, but we need, we need it. Nevertheless, we need each other and we need to celebrate together. We need to party. <laughs> we do need to socialize and get, get together. I, uh, ever since I become an atheist, I, I realized that, that that was something that we needed to do, that that was something that we should enjoy um, but, you know, I think that there's been some issues with some parts of the movement, so to speak, that uh, social gatherings um, are not a in and of themselves important, that, that uh, it's more important to have lectures, uh, it's more important to go to book signings, it's uh, you know, but you know, you're, you celebrate wedding, you officiate them. And uh, the, the, it's, it, it's been one of the best things for me over my life since I become, you know, a, an atheist and a humanist that we needed to socialize. And we, we started drinking with atheists, uh, in New York city and did it ever, been doing it every Friday for 17, 18 years now. And it's, uh, you know, those people are my friends and I enjoy hanging out with them. And we've been doing it with Zoom for the last, uh, you know, eight months. But uh, I think it's really uh, important that we have that. And we're all looking forward to the days that we'll be able to get, get back, to better, uh, back together and meet in person and to, to talk and chat. But I think people need to learn to understand that the social aspect and being social is important un, in and unto itself. And no, you're absolutely right. And as you know, we we met at the you and I met years ago through the Secular Humanist Society of New York, of which I was president for 12 years. And um, I heard from people in other organizations, you're not serious enough. You have all these social gatherings, but you're not, you, you should be out raising hell in the streets. Well, we did a little hell raising, but the point is for our day of reason, brunt lunch in May and for our free thought day lunch in uh, October and for our anniversary and um, Darwin Day dinner in February, we packed the rooms. We packed the rooms because people got together and they'd see each other once a year, twice yeah. a year. And they would run to each other with open arms. How are you doing? And they remember, you know, we, we sat and drank and ate with them at the last thing and they loved it. They loved it. 
why, why, why do so many people who really don't pay attention to the rules and the tenets and the dogmas of their religions, why do they still go to church? Because their friends are there. They, because it's meeting other people. You're right. We need it and we enjoy it. And, and we'll continue to enjoy it again, I hope. And, and that really does happen. And we're going to encourage that, that people will meet and gather and, you know, watch us for a while or watch the show uh, uh, as we go forward. But it is important that, that people meet. And that was one of the uh, aspects of being religious. And what, for me, when I was religious up until about 30, was a social aspect. It was the community that I really enjoyed and, and hung out with. And uh, But, you know, I had to build a new community of people who are not religious. And, you know, when it came across the atheist community and the people in it, you know, I didn't see that a lot of celebrating going on. And I didn't right. see a lot of the things that gathered us just for the pure social aspects of it and to have people feel comfortable to be who they are and to be relaxed around each other and to intermingle in a way that that was relaxed. Uh, some of my first interactions were probably not, I wouldn't characterize it that way. Um, but over a period of time, a lot of the organizations started embracing that and started you, embracing it. You made it happen because that's how I met you because yeah. you came to New York and you looked around the free thought community and said, there are all these great 12 or 13 organizations and they're not talking to each other. You started it with Richie's List. And we met in the backyard of the apartment that you were living in at that time. And just the, the leaders of the various groups over beers and, and hot dogs. Yeah. We started talking to each other because yeah. Rich Sander did it. You did it, man. Not, not me or anybody else. You did it. Well, yeah, that's how Reasonable New York started. And uh, it it's really is Im important that people understand that there is more that we share than we, that we, than we don't share. So every uh, organization has its importance, has their, its mission, has the things that they would like to do. Um, New York is kind of blessed that we have multiple groups and, you know, part of that meeting was that we didn't step on each other's toes, but it was also to gather us so we could find uh, ways to celebrate. And some of the first things that we did was a solstice celebration. And we literally had 100, 150 people come. And that was great. Uh, we got people to get together and mix and mingle, and learn about different groups. And, uh, you know, that those were fun times. And uh, I'm hoping after COVID's over with and we're socializing again, that we find ways that people can, can meet and celebrate. And, uh, you know, earlier this year, I celebrated my my 20,000th day alive, you know, was kind of, I wrote a little thing for Peak about that, you know, about, you know, may we celebrate 5,000 days and, and 10,000 days and 15,000, 20,000, you know, 20,000 was, you know, it was 57, you know, 56 something or other, you know, uh, 5,000 is like um, 13, I guess. And, and, and 10,000 is like 26. So I could see, you know, okay, 13, uh, 5,000, that's kind of like a coming of age, entering puberty, that sort of thing. And then, you know, at 10,000, it's like I'm, my education's over, or I've got a job, I may have a family, you know, celebrating that sort of thing. I, you know, I just hoped it would be a thing and people would start to do that. And that could be a, a, a new ritual. I mean, it doesn't have any particular meaning to it. It's just marking another day, but it's something fun. And it's something we could add to our list of things that we are doing. And give it a shot. A, you know, solstice, the summer solstice, the winter solstice, solstice is really a, a chance for us to gather. And, you know, these winter celebrations, you know, started out with pagan religions and, and uh, there were many gods and, you know, all, pretty much uh, most mythologies had some kind of winter celebration going on. And, 
And, and as we look forward in the future, we, we hope to be able to do that. So I want to get back to that a little bit later. But one of the things I want to cover is what uh, James Randi uh, called woo-woo. And uh, it's, uh, it's taking something like the great conjuncture going on with Saturn and Jupiter and ascribing it to something that affects our personality or our interactions or business, whatever. And that's, that's kind of woo woo. <laughs> it is. It is real. Woo woo. Absolutely. It's, yeah. The uh, roommate once that uh, I, I totally did got from the left field from this, from him. And I was having a problem with uh, a, um, a cable modem at the time and it was overheating and I put it in the freezer and when he came home I said oh the cable modem was overheating and it's in the freezer for you know 15 minutes or something and when I take it out I'll plug it in but you know when we plug it in don't stack it on top of the of the USB uh, port or whatever was uh, causing it to to heat up and he says no no that's that it's uh, it's Mercury's in retrograde right now, and that's what's causing the problem. I looked at him so dumbfounded, I, I laughed. I just laughed out. <laughs> you know, first of all, their Mercury has no magnetic field to it whatsoever, and it's right near the sun. The sun's got a tremendous magnetic effect. So if you want to describe anything to it heating up, it's probably the sun. Now, yeah and retrograde yeah right so you know in in, in doing a little of this st study for the show today um you know i ran across and i i don't really want to dwell on it too much but there was a lot of stuff being said about this great conjuncture between saturn and jupiter and it's like okay jupiter is far out there it's way out there it does have a gravitational effect, but nowhere near what the sun does or what the moon does for the Earth. Um, but it does have an effect uh, on the solar system to a large degree. And so does Saturn. But Saturn is way, way, way out there. <laughs> so yeah. it has no effect on Earth. And people are trying to say, well, in this great conjuncture, there's going to be new business and... I a great awakening for mankind and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, wow, that's a lot of woo-woo. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, the, the whole thing about the gravitational effects, that's only come around in the last few decades because we had our, we had our big moment of astrology back in the 70s. My father would never let me forget that. <laughs> I once called him somewhere around two o'clock in the morning to ask him what hour of the night I was born because several of us were doing charts and, you know, stoned out of our heads and we're doing, and, you know, oh yeah, let me call my father. Why not? He said, you were born about four, four in the morning. Okay. And then he never let me forget that phone call. But we, we had that fun. And then everybody said, okay, that was fun. That's stupid and forget it and move on. So the astrologers and the astrology fans, they said, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe we, we don't, these, these images of the crabs and the scales and the, you to throw that all out. But you gotta admit that the position of the planets and the sun and the moon and everything, these have a gravitational effect on this baby that's just being born. <laughs> I mean, you gotta admit that this has gotta have some kind of effect. <laughs> and I read something online one time where somebody wrote, there's a much greater effect on gravitational effect on the baby of the doctor and the nurses in the room, <laughs> the, the nurse pulling the baby out of the mother is making a much greater effect than the son. Okay, <laughs> that's absolutely true. <laughs> and that's why we should gather. We can yeah. get 
gravitational energy together. <laughs> Attract to each other, I guess. Yeah. But no, it was, uh, it's, it's uh, in this day and age when we are really trying to understand the natural world and understand human behavior better. Um, it's kind of disheartening to see people really going off onto these uh, tangents and really, I think you're right when we were talking at the beginning as like, as atheists, we have to be more skeptical of some of the stuff that we, it sounds good to us. And we like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mithras yeah, it was all copied, uh, you know, over to Christianity and that's not true. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds great, but it's <laughs> Uh, and there's certainly no evidence for that. Was yeah. there likely some type of co-opting of presents exchanged in Saturnalia to Christianity? Probably. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And Mithra was taken up by uh, the Roman soldiers in the legions uh, because he killed uh, some, his big claim to frame was he killed a, a bull that represented the whole universe. I can't remember the name of it. So he had this slayer of beasts thing, which would appeal to soldiers. So they, they kind of liked Mithra. And then along came Christianity. And uh, so the same guys who liked Mithra last year, now we're getting this story about this guy who came back from the dead uh this other guy and uh maybe in a few cases they melded together but certainly not any really big time kind of thing no. well, I mean, besides, all, all, so many of those things that supposedly you know like uh they're the they're the the three kings and the shepherds and the no room at the inn and the slaughter the slaughter of the innocents all those came decades and decades after the, the Gospels and after Paul. Some of that didn't come around till the third century. And Mithra had been long since forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there are, uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier, there's, there is this general need to meet and to gather and to socialize and to celebrate. Uh, not everybody has had that opportunity in history, obviously, because they're poor and they don't have extra to gift give and i think we need to be cognizant of that that you know we're talking about having fun uh, uh, and celebration that you know we should keep in mind that some people may not either have the time to do it or they may not have the wherewithal to join in and you know go to a restaurant or to bake something for for a potluck and but they should be welcomed and they should be uh, honored. And I think that whoever's organizing in their community or whatever should make it clear that if you don't have the means or you don't have the uh, uh, ability to to do that, that uh, you're still welcome. And uh, we don't certainly need to take the, the village idiot and make him king for a day and then slaughter him the next day. You know, uh, I you know, I think that there, there was something like that in history that sure, just sure. about how real that is. I, you know, that's very tenuous also in terms of history uh, on that, that they took, you know, poor people and, you know, made them the poorest person in town. They made them, you know, king for for the Saturnalia and then afterwards they slayed him. I, I don't really think that that happened. Uh, um, you know, that's probably taking parting a little too hardcore. <laughs> uh, and we certainly don't need to do that. But uh, I think going forward, uh, it would be nice to say, okay, as atheists, as humanists, as skeptics, as, as people who are free from religion, that we have an opportunity to meet and gather and socialize, um, maybe instead of gag gift giving we can be you know gathering gifts for the poor or the the needy and uh, the people who don't have an opportunity to get what they need um maybe we celebrate that way maybe privately amongst friends we could do some gag gift giving to each other but uh 
but uh, in a social setting and stuff as we gather as, as, as secular people, I think that's a great opportunity for us to, uh, to, to gather and be able to do that. And I hope that people who watch this will say, yeah, that's, that, that'd be fun. You know, let's celebrate the equinoxes. Let's celebrate the solstices and uh, have, some, have some fun on a regular basis. And, you know, we'll meet every week and hang out and stuff, but then we'll get gussied up or have a fun party and, you know, uh, meet at a, you know, summer's a great time for an outdoor picnic and winter it's you know let's find a restaurant let's find you know somebody's house or whatever to meet at and just have a good time and socialize and be nice be a nice human be nice to each other and i think that that's that's something that i hope uh would happen and we've seen it in new york that we're able to do that so i know it works it's just we have to figure out a way for other people to do that and that's one of the things i hope that moral misfits ends up being one of those things that we're able to to do those things in the future i hope so too and um so before we end i just want to you know we'll put a, i'm going to put a link into a couple things that we were referencing there was a uh, we were talking about the history and some of the information i got was from historyforatheist.com um you know pretty skeptical view of a lot of the history that we claim and mentioned to Stephen Fry there. Um, and uh, nasa.gov is a, is a, is a great uh, website to understand all the um, astrological, not astrological, astronomical events that are going on on a regular basis. There's all kinds of things going on and you know meteor showers and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of great things to be able to go there. And they talked about the great conjuncture going on right now and stuff. So. Uh, the Guardian is always a great source for getting some information. Oh, yeah. And they have a couple of articles on there. Uh, Emily uh, Siegel had, had wrote an article about it, uh, about a little bit about the woo-woo going on about it. And obviously, Wikipedia is a great source. So we're going to take those three, those four uh, sources and put them in the comment section or in the in the text of the YouTube channel. So you can look it up yourself. I'm sure there's a zillion things that you want, people at home want to send to us to, to, to talk about. And next year we'll gather and have it and hopefully we'll be able to do it live. Uh, it's usually the 20th or 21st of December and you know it should be good. I think the next one will be March 20th or 21st is the Equinox. So that'll be our next little thing that we could uh, celebrate and talk about and you know there's a lot of talk about you know that's around the time that jesus may have been in sept or mary may have been you know impregnated and <laughs> nine months later is the yeah. christmas sort of thing so there's something we could talk about <laughs> in, uh, the the spring equinox but uh you know there's definitely uh food for thought and and fodder for for nice conversation and I don't want this to be something about Christianity that we're, you know, dumping on them all the time. It's just they got to take their own religion with a grain of salt. We got to take our atheism with a grain of salt. And, you know, we got to be nice people to each other. And I think that that's the overall message of trying right. Right. to talk about this. I, we can't help about Christianity, though, because that's the civilization that we live in. I mean, it's a civilization that we used to be called Christendom. <laughs> um, so we can't we can't help ourselves. But you know, it's not the only nonsense. <laughs> this happens to be our nonsense. Yeah, I remember watching a, 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 a an episode of Mash one time, and they did a whole uh unceremony and stuff and they unmarried somebody you know and they it was a fun episode if everybody got to watch mash and uh, understood that show, show that a particular episode where they do an unceremony sort of thing it was really fun and I, that's that's stuck in my brain about you yeah know, okay I imagine they must have relieved yeah. myself and free myself from that 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 was that was fun that i mean for me it just took a long time and my my coming of it, my atheism and humanism was a very slow path over about 10 years. But for some people, it's like, I don't really believe that. And I'm, you know, free of that. And, you know, and science is one of those things that's 
not exact and it changes a little bit and you know we got to understand a little bit how things happen and with covid we've seen a lot of woo woo come out about that and we've seen some really good science and it's uh, i think it's a testament that we see a really big effort in science and cultures throughout the united or throughout the world have come together to really tackle a problem and they were open with their research and they were uh, learning from each other and tackling different problems and telling everybody about it. And I thought to myself, why can't that be a, the kind of world that we live in that we're sharing more instead of holding more, that yeah. we are helping each other and that there is a, 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 a much more powerful, happier, better future if we share more and to me we don't start sharing more until we're meeting more and hanging out more and being nice people to each other and to uh celebrate you know relatively innocuous things and uh the, that all of us can you know somebody can be a christian and celebrate the solstice there's nothing that would stop them from it there's no heretical problem with that <laughs> It's uh, you're not you're not you're not worshiping the 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 sun. Uh, you know, we're, we're not we're not uh, celebrating anything that's uh, that's a deity or anything that would conflict with their religion. It's just a nice thing to do with our friends and, and neighbors and and hopefully get to know more people and more friends and neighbors. We get to hang out. Sounds good to me. So, John, thank you for hanging out with me and talking. Anytime. Yeah, we have had fun. And uh, and uh, I want to wish you a happy Saturnalia and happy solstice. And I'll do the same for you. And you know what? I'll even say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, cool Kwanzaa. What else you got? <laughs> and a Happy New Year. And Happy New Year. Yeah, we're all looking forward to it. Yeah. That's for yeah. sure. You know, I hope it is a it is an up year, and I hope a lot of things are going in the right 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 direction and stuff. I think uh, politically we're probably going in the right direction. I think economically there's uh, opportunity after we get done with COVID. I think hopefully people's spirits will be better, and they also realize that we actually do need each other. And let's see if we can find out ways to make that happen. And stuff. So, here's to 2021. And you've been watching Moral Misfits. I'm Rich Sander, and that's John Rafferty. Thank you for watching.